Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whichever part of the world you are watching us. I am Dr. Shivakumar, heading the Pediatric Cardiology and Adult Structural Heart Disease Division from the Madras Medical Mission, Chennai, India. So today we have an interesting transcatheter intervention. In the recent times, there is an increasing interest among the interventional cardiologists to do a non-surgical closure of sinus venosus defects. Sinus venosus defects are basically a defect in the superior venocaval to right atrial junction and intraatrial communication that causes a left-right shunt and is often associated with an anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Traditionally, till about a decade before, it was always addressed by surgery. However, in the recent decade, there is an increasing interest for a transcatheter closure using covered stents. So, I have with me my colleague, Dr. Tejasvi, who is going to give a small PowerPoint presentation about the case. I would like to introduce the other people here. It is Dr. Pramod Saga, who is the imaging specialist. Dr. Farin Qureshi is our final year fellow who is going to assist me. Uh, Sister Jay Chitra and Nadira, who are the circulating and scrub nurses, and Prabhu and Surya, who are the technologists. Over to you, Tejasvi. Thank you, sir. Uh, our case today is a 28-year-old lady who is the mother of one child. She was incidentally detected to have a sinus venosus defect during routine evaluation. Apart from uh, NYHA class 2 dyspnea on exertion, she does not have any symptoms and no other comorbidities. On examination, she had stable vitals with mild cardiomegaly. CVS examination showed a wide split second heart sound with a grade 2 ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area. Her chest x-ray showed mild cardiomegaly with a CT ratio of around 60% with a dilated MPA segment and pulmonary plethora. This is a 12 lead ECG which shows a normal QRS axis and an RSR dash pattern in V1 suggestive of RV volume overload. This is the echocardiography where in the four chamber view there is uh, RV volume overload with dilated RA and RV and in the subcostal view you can see here that there is a sinus venosus defect. We routinely perform TE and CT evaluation for these patients. TE will be shown live to you. This is the cardiac CT which shows uh, a single SVC with the RUPV draining into the SVC at the SVC RA junction. This is the sinus venosus defect seen in an axial cut. And here also you can see the sinus venosus defect in the sagittal cut. The SVC diameter just above the SVC RA uh, junction was around 20 into 19 millimeters. Uh, as Sir was saying, the basic anatomy in a sinus venosus defect is a defect in the common wall between the RUPV and the SVC causing a left to right shunt. And transcatheter closures and emerging treatment strategy. Our center has the largest experience in the world and we have performed around 80 successful cases so far. So uh, the transcatheter closure involves placement of a covered stent in the SVC so that the, uh, the defect in the common wall between the RUPV and the SVC is closed and the RUPV blood is rooted into the LA. The key is to choose an appropriate size stent. Too large a stent can cause obstruction of the RUPV and too small a stent can lead to a residual. We did a virtual reality reconstruction of the CT of this patient and as you can see here, this is the RUPV opening out into the SVC RA junction. A, a virtual covered stent was implanted and in this uh, cranial aspect, uh, from viewed from the cranial aspect, you can see that the RUPV is rooted into the LA with the placement of the covered stent and the defect is closed. Over oh, that was a wonderful, di wonderful uh, description, Dr. Tejasvi. Thank you. Can you just go to the previous slide, please? I just want you to retain this PowerPoint. Actually, here you have nicely shown that the sinus venosus defect is actually an intraatrial communication out of the confines of vowel fossa. And the surgeons try to roof it, roof the right upper pulmonary vein by a pericardial patch. Whereas in the uh, transcatheter covered stent strategy, it is the wall of the covered stent which is going to form the roof of the right upper pulmonary vein and thereby rooting that right upper pulmonary vein towards the left atrium and allow the superior vena cava to drain through the lumen of the covered stent into the right atrium. So thanks thanks for a nice uh, presentation. Uh, Pramod, can you explain the transesophageal echocardiography today morning that you have acquired? Yeah. Good morning everyone. I'll be demonstrating the transesophageal echo that we performed in this patient. This is a frozen frame which I am showing early, uh, showing now. This is in the upper esophageal view in zero degree. This is the right pulmonary artery and this is the superior vena cava. When I push the probe downwards, as we can see here, here we see that 
the right upper pulmonary vein is draining towards the SVC RA junction. I will show this again with the color. Yeah, here this is the same image with the color flows where we can see that this is the right pulmonary artery and this is the SVC and I, as I push the probe downward we can see that the right upper pulmonary vein here is draining into the SVC RA junction as, as we can see through the uh, see by the color flows here the red flows towards the SVC and uh, when I push the probe downwards further we can see here the, SV, the sinus venosus defect is opening. I'll just freeze it and show again. Yeah. Now, the defect here that we can see when I'm pushing downwards is the sinus venosus defect. This is in the zero degree view. Now it's the color again to show the same thing when I am pushing and I'm bringing the color to the defect. We can see here the torrential flows from left atrium into right atrium through this sinus venosus defect. And we can compare it, compare it. This is the defect here and this is the color flow we can see on the right side. Now I'm pushing it downward further to show the oval force. We can see here when I'm pushing further, the oval force, the oval force is intact without any additional defect. So I've done it again in the long axis view, which is otherwise called the bicable view. Usually the uh, around 90 to 120 degree, we will be able to see the SVC with the sinus venosus defect properly. In this patient, in 120 degree, we could demonstrate the sinus venosus defect well. Now I'm turning the probe rightward. When I turn, we can see this is the SVC and this is the defect that is seen, that is in the cranial part of the atrial septal, uh, atrial septum. And I'll show with the color. Again, when we see, like when I'm pushing, uh, when I'm going, Cranially, we can see here there is a torrential flow of blood from left atrium to right atrium, uh, from uh, left atrium to right atrium here. The superior vena cava I measured here was 17, but usually we got a higher diameter in the CT. We will go more with the CT di dimensions. And this is the right lower pulmonary vein, which was normal. And this is the left upper and lower pulmonary veins, which so was that normal. So that was a great demonstration, Pramod. So what you have shown is that uh, the uh, there is a defect uh, just beneath the superior vena cava in the cavoatrial junction uh, causing an intraatrial communication you are able to demonstrate the color doppler flows a blue color flow across the uh, uh, intraatrial septum uh, and now so our plan will be we will have two venous catheters one venous catheter will run from the inferior vena cava through the right atrium into the superior vena cava the second venous catheter will go through the right atrium, make a septal puncture, enter the left atrium, and from the left atrium, enter the right upper pulmonary vein. So we will have a continuous pigtail catheter monitoring of the right upper pulmonary vein throughout the entire procedure. This will ensure that, number one, when I inject in the right upper pulmonary vein, the blood should not enter the right atrium and it should be rooted into the left atrium. Number two, the right upper pulmonary vein should not get occluded and the right upper pulmonary vein pressure should not increase at all. And there should be a complete left right shunt cessation or stopping of the left right shunt during this procedure. So we take a right femoral venous puncture and a left femoral venous puncture. So this is an ultrasound guidance. Uh, make the picture a little brighter for me, please. So now this is the right femoral vein that we are accessing. We put in a standard six French introducer. The patient is anesthetized for facilitating this transesophageal echocardiography. I'm going for the left femoral venous uh, puncture.
so we are uh, the vascular access is completed can we come down enable the x-ray so we have two vascular access now we will give at this point 5000 units of unfractionated heparin diagnostic catheter Judkins right 5 French with thermo wire so uh, so I am taking my catheter through the left femoral vein we are going through the inferior vena cava Go inside. So we enter the uh, right um, I mean pulmonary artery, we record the pulmonary artery pressure and the radial artery pressure for comparison show the pulmonary artery pressure the pulmonary artery pressure is normal the patient is anesthetized so the systolic is around 23 the diastolic is around 12 with a mean of around 16 17 millimeters of mercury so normal pa pressure pull back to right ventricle so as we are coming into the right ventricle the right ventricular pressure is sort of similar it's around 23 millimeters of mercury right atrium so the right atrial pressure is about eight to nine millimeters of mercury so at this point we will plan a transeptal puncture so we are entering into the show the uh, that's the azagas The reason why we take the transeptal uh, puncture is for a complete documentation of the right upper pulmonary vein uh, pressures throughout the entire procedure during our balloon interrogation, during the stent deployment, and even after the stent deployment. So, we are going to take an 8 French mullein sheet. This is a standard cook. 8 French mullein sheet, a small blade system. We will be making the septal puncture in the fossa ovalis, guided by transesophageal echocardiography. Take it back. Transeptal needle with contrast. This guide wire safe. Connect contrast. So this is a standard BRK needle, one, okay. So we are introducing through the transeptal sheath, we are tracking it down. So we make a 
we make a transeptal puncture at this point so i'm coming down in the svcra junction push the probe inside yeah come on zero degree as well biplane yeah okay so we are tenting the septum here okay show the region where it is being tented yes sir one sec so i have advanced the needle yes here so this is in the left atrium so i'm advancing the sheath over the dilator and now we are withdrawing we had already given heparin for this patient since we are doing this septal puncture on transesophageal echo guidance diagnostic right coronary catheter again will record the left atrial pressure obviously it has to be the same as right atrial pressure because there is a large sinus venosus defect so now we are getting our diagnostic jatkins right coronary catheter into the left atrium and we introduce our guide wire i withdraw the catheter all the way till i am pretty close to the intraatrial septum i'll try to divert this right coronary catheter more towards the right atrium right side hold it so now i have tilted the the sheath towards the right side at this point i advance the guide wire into the right upper pulmonary vein so this position looks good so i have advanced the sheath there You're holding there yes. so i'm taking out the diagnostic catheter leaving behind the wire at that point and again flush this catheter now get me the pigtail inside hold hold the wire so this five french pigtail that is going into the right upper pulmonary vein will be our main pressure monitoring catheter and the angiographic catheter hold the wire hold the wire we can also see in the t that the catheter is into the right upper pulmonary vein oh that's nice okay. so we have put in the catheter we have put in the pigtail now you see pramod it's a beautiful demonstration that you are making can you demonstrate the sinus venosus defect now by yes. pushing in the catheter and show it correct that's wonderful yes. that's wonderful just stay there okay. when the defect is seen and put the color yes. flow across the sinus venosus defect 
I bring it to yeah. the yeah. that's good uh, yeah yeah that's that's a good now take the take the color out now we can appreciate that actually our the the pulmonary venous catheter that i have parked is not coming in the way of the sinusinosis effect so if i am going to be putting in a covered stent the pigtail is going to be behind the covered stent because the pigtail is not coming in the way of the right atrial junction at all so it is this indicates that uh, there is a like a posterior wall of the right upper pulmonary vein is in direct continuity with the posterior wall of the left atrium it is and it's only an anomalous drainage caused by its proximity to the superior vena cava so at this point what i do is i connect it to an injection now come to the right side get me the the thermo wire thank you so through the right side now we are advancing the venous catheter yeah go inside so this is a marker pigtail that goes into the superior vena cava so the first angiogram give 10 ml at 15 rate from the right upper pulmonary vein and demonstrate that it is draining into the right atrium come towards me yeah yeah ready for the injection okay so here this is the right upper pulmonary vein freeze the image when the pulmonary vein is fully visualized go to the yeah so, so uh, that's enough so this is clearly showing that this entire right upper pulmonary vein is draining into the right atrium itself however the catheter is actually going from the right atrium through the transeptal puncture into the left atrium and it is entering into the right upper pulmonary vein so now the next step that we are going to do will be we're going to be connecting to the superior vena cava and make one angiography in order to assess what is the length of the give about 15 ml at 15 rate okay table little down yeah ready for injection shut okay so show freeze it okay freeze now go back when the both the pulmonary veins and superior vena cava are seen yeah thank you so in this view the injector is giving the contrast in the superior vena cava and we have three markers above the level of drainage of the right upper pulmonary vein and then parallelly i was injecting through the right upper pulmonary vein through the pigtail and you are able to demonstrate the right upper pulmonary vein draining into the superior vena cava at that level so now we have to go for the next step that is balloon occlusion thermo wire again i want the jutkins right again so the jutkins right diagnostic catheter now goes into the left innominate vein and we'll go deeper into the left brachial vein so this is entering into the left innominate vein track the vein okay keep going the patient's hand is abducted so 
we are advancing the catheter into the uh, now we get a stiffer wire the lander twist hold the come back to the heart yeah so at this point we take out this diagnostic introducer sheath we are going to be changing over to a yeah, serial dilator so this is a serial dilator it starts with 18 french 20 french 22 french so we will make a dilatation of the groin puncture wound can you get me a small blade please and a small artery forceps as well remove this so i'm introducing this small graded introducer this is to facilitate the introduction of the 20 french long sheath so this is a long 20 french introducer sheath it's a cook braided 20 french long introducer sheath remove this because of the pre dilatation it goes in smooth so now we are withdrawing this dilator just hold it So now I am aspirating the blood So we are going to now flush it change to arterial pressures yeah so the hemodynamic monitor now shows radial artery pressures in yellow color and the left atrial pressures in red color the malin sheet in the left atrium is now i want a 24 mm long cylindrical balloon basically what we identified was that there was a uh, there was a uh, superior vena cava dimension of uh, about superior vena cava dimension of about uh, 20 mm so we want to upsize it by at least 4 mm more so we have yeah 24 mm so no, we, we have can, a, okay. this is a a 24 mm balloon so this balloon now enters into the landerquist wire now if you are seeing the echo live we can also see here that uh, this this is the 90 uh, by cable view and we can see here This is the pal pigtail that has been ready. 
kept placed from left atrium into the pulmonary vein and this is the the straight line you can see is the Lundquist wire over which the balloon will be passed now and this is the sinus venosus defect. I will just put the color and show again and here you can see that this is the blue flows to the sinus venosus defect. The, this is the pigtail that has been passed from the left atrium into the pulmonary vein and this is the, this horizontal line you can see is the Lundquist wire. Now the balloon will come and occlude this and then we will see live whether this color flows or not and how the RUPV is rooted into the left atrium. That was a, that was a good view, Pramod. So, uh, now you demonstrate the color flow from the left atrium into the right. Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful uh, demonstration. Now, what you would be anticipating, Dr. Pramod, will be when I inflate the cav uh, long cylindrical balloon across the cavoatrial junction, this blue color should disappear. Thereby indicating that there is no communication from the left atrium to right atrium. Is that right? Yes, sir. Great. So, what we'll do is we will uh, we'll advance the balloon. Now, I am de-airing the balloon. So this is a 24 into uh, 8 centimeter So I am progressively de-airing the balloon. Excellent. So now so hold it. So I'm introducing this through the long sleeve. Hold it like this. So the balloon has come. The balloon has entered the superior vena cavo atrial junction. At this point, can you go live, Pramod, with your yeah. color flows? Yeah. Uh, so going, now we are uh, seeing the left-right flow. Can you demonstrate the yes, left? Yes, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Slightly pull out the catheter so that the sinus venosus defect is centered on the heart, on the image. Yeah. Rightward rotate. Yes. So at this point, I am now making an inflation of the balloon. Keep it pushed in. Tell the number, please. See, as we are inflating, we can see here on the left side of the screen, the balloon is getting inflated. And on the right side, the color flows that was seen earlier is, has completely disappeared. Now I, now, now I will uh, turn it more to the left sh to show the right upper pulmonary vein drainage. Now we can see that the right upper pulmonary vein is rooted fully into the left atrium as seen by the color flows here. This is the color flows. The red flows from the right upper pulmonary vein into the left atrium and when I turn more leftward, we can see the balloon has completely occluded this region and there is no... Can we see that without color compare so that yes. the entire screen is now occupied by... Yeah. So now you, you are able to demonstrate the long cylindrical balloon across the superior vena cava and now when you enable color without color compare, yeah, as absolutely there is no left right no. shunt at all. So at this point, what I'm going to do is make an angiography right. of the right upper pulmonary vein. Can I give 20 ml at 15 rate? 
20 ml at 15 day, the blood pressure is stable. Yeah, so now I'm going to make an injection. So we are able to see only the left up, left atrium filling. There is some holdup of the contrast in the left upper pulmonary vein. I'm going to demonstrate what is the pressure in the left upper pulmonary vein by taking the pressure transducer onto the pulmonary vein. Simultaneously, I have turned the probe more rightward to show the right. Okay. Show the pulmonary venous pressure in low scales. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. So the pulmonary venous pressure is around 12 millimeters of mercury, 12 to 13 millimeters of mercury. And on uh, Doppler, pulse Doppler, can you Doppler it? Yes, I'm Doppling it now. So this is the pulmonary venous pressure. I'm going to demonstrate the left atrial pressure. See, the, my, my mullein sheath tip is in the left atrium. So this, this pulmonary venous pressure is now 12 to 13. I'm disconnecting this and connecting it into the left atrium. So this is left atrial pressure. Left atrial pressure is about 10 millimeters of mercury or 9 millimeters of mercury. There is a little bit more pulsatility in the uh, left atrium, whereas when I connect to the right upper pulmonary vein, the, the pulsatility is a little low, thereby indicating that I'm having a mild form of gradient of around two to three millimeters of mercury between the right upper pulmonary vein to the left atrium. So here we are getting a, a mean gradient of around 12 to 13. Uh, Pramod, you have now this demonstrated the, the flow the, from the uh, right upper yeah. pulmonary vein into the left atrium. Yeah. Now when we see here, I mean, I turn more the probe towards the right, I can see the color flows from right pulmonary vein into the left atrium. The only thing is you can see some amount of uh, turbulence here. Pre-mounted 24 into 7 pre mounted Just make it better yeah that's a 24 into you can into see a minimal turbulence here as uh, seven, was mentioning so here also we can see there is a minimal turbulence but however there was no significant gradient when i did a pulse wave doppler it was only it was again coming to around 2 and uh, so pramod at this point i'm going to deflate the balloon so that sure. you are able to demonstrate the left to right shunt that is going to start so keep the color on Yes. I am deflating now the balloon fully and as I deflate, you should be able to demonstrate the color flow again from the... Yeah, we can see now the color flow starts. Demonstrate the atrial septum, the cranial end a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that, that is the that is the right left shunt, that is the left right shunt. Mm -hmm. So we are convinced that the, uh, this, this patient's sinus venosus defect is going to be closed by a yeah, 24 millimeter covered stent. So what we'll do is we will take out this balloon. Just recheck the uh, pulmonary venous flows and the sinus venosus defect flows. Yeah, now we are able to clearly see that there is a left-right shunt through the sinus venosus defect. Teeth now. I need two in deflators, one for the inner balloon and one for the outer balloon when I am. I want an Amplat super stiff guide wire. Since so, the, now, now we are, I am demonstrating the right upper pulmonary vein pressure. 
this is without any balloon across uh, you can see that the right upper pulmonary venous pressure is around 10 millimeters of mercury it was 10 millimeters without any balloon and it increased to about 12 millimeters with the balloon so indicating that there is a increase in the pulmonary venous pressure by 2 millimeters of mercury so what we'll do now will be to use a protective balloon strategy when i'm expanding the covered stent to 24 millimeters if i have posterior to the covered stent across the right upper pulmonary vein to la junction a balloon of around 12 millimeters that prevents the covered stent from going and touching the posterior wall of the left atrium i will be protecting that right upper pulmonary vein and giving a laminar flow into the left atrium you have yes. even otherwise demonstrated in the uh, echocardiogram that there is not much of obstruction in the right upper pulmonary vein so that is quite satisfactory what so think, uh, pulmonary venous protection would be an even more safer strategy correct correct i agree so now what we will do is so we are going to be in order to allow a pulmonary venous protective strategy I'm going to advance an amplat super stiff guide wire into this pigtail that we have already positioned in the right upper pulmonary vein, and I'm taking out the I'm taking out the pigtail catheter. At this point, I will flush the malin sheet. So, sir, can you make one check of the activated clotting time from the radial artery catheter? One ACT check, please. So, this is a, a 12 millimeter Mustang balloon. A 12 into 4 Mustang balloon. So this 12 into 4 Mustang balloon now goes through this Amplat Super Stiff Guide Wire. Hold this guide wire here. Thank you. So we are advancing this Mustang balloon. So the Mustang balloon is now across the SVC, uh, across the right upper pulmonary vein to LA junction. So this will be ready to get inflated whenever my covered stent is going up. So now we will start processing the covered stent. So we have taken a 20, uh, uh, 24 millimeter balloon for the interrogation. So we are going to be using a 24, show that picture. So it is going to be a 24 millimeter covered Chitam platinum stent. This is a 10 zig stent. So this stent now comes with a bib balloon. So this is the 24 millimeter, is it 24 into 7? Yeah, 24 into 7. So this is a pre-mounted covered stent. It has got two balloon ports and one lumen port. So the lumen port is green in color, which I am flushing now. Now there are two other color ports. The blue color is indigo. So the indigo is for the inner balloon. The orange is the O. Orange is for the outer balloon. So O, orange, outer balloon. I, indigo, inner balloon. So I am connecting now a small indiflator filled with contrast, full contrast. Taking out 
take full amount of contrast thank you very much yeah that will be nice so this is now yeah keep keep uh, filling the syringe so now i am connecting the smaller syringe on to the inner balloon the availability of this custom made tensix long cp stents will make this procedure more comfortable no sir what is your opinion yeah i agree with you pramod i think the pre mounted cp takes away the uh, burden of uh, uh, choosing a balloon and then trying to uh, get an appropriate sized uh, stent pre mounting uh, so now this uh, the, this becomes very easy for us the other uh, cover stents that are available in uh, uh, with us is uh, or the covered andra stent covered uh, optimus cv stent and covered b grafts so however uh, those stents are not available in the very large lens i want now a balloon for the outer balloon yeah an indeflator for the outer balloon so now i am So I have connected to the outer balloon. Sir, so may I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, how did you choose the length of the stent? The the previous uh, um, balloon that I used was about eight centimeter, and we had already positioned about three centimeters of that balloon. Can you show that sequence uh, uh, of the yeah uh, yeah yeah the balloon balloon inflation sequence? Now the, the next next frame yeah. So here we can appreciate that. the it's a 8 cm balloon we have centered the uh, balloon on the pulmonary vein and we are able to appreciate that i have a 3 cm above the pulmonary vein which is going to be the anchor zone and about 3 cm below so we should be able to get an occlusion now i i have taken a 7 cm stent so that too much of protrusion into the right atrium is avoided what we'll do is once i inflate the inner balloon you will tell me how much of stent protrusion is there Into below the, the lower end of the sinusinosis defect so based on that input then we will adjust the location of the covered stent sure sir so that is the advantage of this bib balloon so that i can inflate the inner balloon and the stent will still be not be attached to the walls of the superior vena cava and i will be able to adjust the position of the uh, stent so it is now it is fully de aired i will discard the air out of the syringe hold it like this this is diluted okay so we are all set in order to uh, now i will just confirm that the covered stent is nicely gripped around the balloon we put in a protective sleeve in order to avoid the stent from getting distorted in the valve of the uh, 20 french long sheath so this whole assembly now goes through the landerquist wire
Keep it straight, please. With your right hand. ACT is 248 seconds, which is reasonably adequate. So we will continue with the same dose. So I have taken the protective sleeve out and I'm taking the stent across the pulmonary vein. At this point, I will check where is my pulmonary vein by a contrast angiography. Can you give me a, yeah, die. Okay. So this is going to be telling me the position of my pulmonary venous sheath. So at this position, I am reasonably advanced. I'll further advance the covered stent a little bit more so that I get even better anchor. At this point, probably I will repeat another picture. So the second picture I will reserve after I inflate the inner balloon. So I am ready to go with the inner balloon now. The inner balloon pressure is about 4 atmospheres. Uh, you are planning to uh, inflate the Mustang at, uh, after the inner after balloon, After that, sir? yeah, because okay. the inner balloon is not going to be causing... Malinshit is okay, it's well below. So now I am inflating the inner balloon entirely. So few things that we try to look at now. Number one is the lower end of the stent is clearly below the sinus venosus defect. Demonstrate the color in the sinus venosus defect. The color in the sinus venosus defect. Yeah. So this is the color in the sinus venosus defect. Now we will take away the color and find out the stent. The stent metallic part is extending here. here. See, exactly. Here. Yeah. A little bit pull out the catheter so that you see more of the superior vena cava. Yeah, that's a good picture. Now you rotate. Yeah, that is the inner, that is the stent. Now make the stent longitudinal by making subtle rotations on the uh, uh, the transesophageal echo angle okay. till you are completely long, the entire long axis of the stent is seen. Now, yeah, yes. further, yeah, yeah, okay. So now show the lower end of the stent, push the probe inside. Yeah, it's quite lower down. Quite lower quite down. Low. So now it's I'm going to make here. another injection on this right upper pulmonary vein sheath. So I have Position got a decent protection. So at this point, I'm going to come out of the 
Mustang balloon. Hold it here. So I am giving the protective balloon inflation. This is a Mustang balloon from Boston Scientific. I am inflating. So this is inflated to almost around 12 atmospheres. Okay. So this is now at around 12 atmospheres. This 12 atmospheres is going to ensure that the constant when I am inflating to about 4 atmospheres is going to be posteriorly indented. And so I am not going to have pulmonary venous gradient at all. Now let us see the lower end of the stent from both. Yes, sir. Yes, this is fully elongated now. I am okay. pushing downward. Okay. So you can see quite lower actually. It's quite low than the defect. It's quite it's, yeah. The pointer you can see that is the lower end, and uh, this this is the region of sinus venosus defect, and it is quite lower down, and we have a at least uh, two to two point five centimeter below that. Okay. So at below this point. Sinus venosus defect. So this is the my sheath now in the left atrium. Show that picture again. So that is my sheath in the left atrium. The, the Mustang balloon is now across the right upper pulmonary vein. And we are now ready to go with the outer balloon. So now we will take the outer balloon. So now I am inflating the outer balloon. It is approximating well. Approximating well. Now demonstrate the flow across the sinus venosus defect. Is there a flow? There is no flow across the sinus venosus defect. Rotate it and now confirm that there is no flow. I am rotating more rightward now. There is no flows. I am coming back. Again there is no flow with it from the no oh, that is there that is, is a flow there right? is a flow here now yeah. here on the rightward edge i can see a flow so i'm i'm now progressively inflating the balloon the outer balloon look at the color flows that color flow uh, this is the region and uh, we are getting that the flow is decreasing and now there is some Minimal flows there. Okay, now co come to a rightward rotation and demonstrate. Pulmonary vein. Yeah, this okay, that is the so place is where the balloon, my actually, the Mustang inflated balloon is, balloon is there. This is the Mustang. This is the region of Mustang balloon. Mustang balloon. Now come leftward. Going leftward. Yeah, here. Okay. Yeah, this region, there is some amount of flow seen at the rightward okay. edge. Okay. However, on going to the left, we don't see any. Okay. Color. So this is the outer balloon. Can you go a little bit up, sister? Yeah. Keep up. Tell me the pressures. Yeah. That's enough. That's enough. Now look at the color flows. This now we don't see any much color actually. Okay. Not, not much of color. Very negligible color flow can be seen here, but otherwise. Okay. There's I no am going to now deflate here. the balloon. I am deflating the balloon. I am deflating the inner balloon.
I have completely deflated the balloon. Go to zero degree and then check. Now I am going to be deflating my right upper pulmonary vein balloon. I'm gently advancing my right upper pulmonary vein sheath into the pulmonary vein and taking in the Mustang balloon. Hold it here. So I'm taking out now at this point the Mustang balloon out. You're holding it there. I'm going to be flushing out the. Okay, now can you? That that's on a zero it's degree. A, that's a, a horizontal degree, plane. Horizontal view. Can you can you show me now the level of color flow? Color, yeah. We don't oh, see any color. Yeah, a little above. Yeah. Little above. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now that is the right upper pulmonary artery that you are yes. showing. So as you are going inside. I'm pushing the probe downward now. Yes. Correct. This that is, is the, the right, right upper, upper pulmonary vein draining into the left atrium now. Pointer. Now come to the middle. Keep the stent in the middle. Yeah. So that is the stent across the SVCRA junction. The right upper pulmonary vein flows are looking laminar. Can we take on pulse wave Doppler at that point? Yes. Yes. So it's, it's quite, quite laminar. Quite laminar flows. Okay. Now, can you go on to main picture? Uh, now keep Color. going down and demonstrate. Color? Yeah. Yeah. Now keep on going down. Can you point at this? Yeah. So that is the left atrium. Going downward. I'm Leave too it. down into the. Okay, so now come to long axis, 90 degree, 90 degree, and slightly pull out the probe, please. Yeah, okay. Now, rotate it to about 100 or so, so that the stent becomes long in real long axis. Show the stent, please. Yeah, now make, if you rot rotate, okay, that's, yes. that's good enough. Yes. Now put the color flow. We are able to see the wall of this tent. Yeah. So on the top, what you see is the left atrium, and then the stent is seen with that is that is the that is the stent flows. It looks quite good. So at this point, I'm going to make an angiography. So this is an angiography from the sheath. It's clearly demonstrating that. Show this picture. It's only filling the left atrium. Stop it. When the right upper pulmonary vein is draining into the left atrium, stop it. Yeah. Go forward, forward. So absolutely no flows from the left atrium into the right atrium. And now at this point, I'm going to put it to pressures. Already, Pramod, you have demonstrated that the, the veins, venous flow laminar for, uh, nature laminar. of the blood flow. So that indicates that the right upper pulmonary vein is not at significantly increased pressures. However, the contrast volume that we have given may sometimes show up with a higher left atrial pressure as well. In some of the patients, there can be a restrictive LV physiology and that also can be responsible for slightly higher left atrial pressures. So here we are observing that there is a pulmonary venous pressure somewhere close to about 17 to 18 millimeters of mercury. We have clearly shown that there is no flows 
A cross. Oh, okay. That is that is a, that's a good view on echocardiography. So put a pulse wave Doppler again. Now again on the pulmonary vein. Yeah, we can see a laminar pulsatile flows actually. We can see the pulsatile flows. Even the atrial systolic reversals are seen in between. Shall we go to one hepatoclavicular view, which is left anterior oblique 40 degree and cranial 40 degree, which actually separates out the entire left atrium and the right atrium. So it is, it's also called as the four chamber view. So in that view, once again, another picture we will take. Yeah, little above, little above. So we will be having the left atrium and left ventricle on one side of the screen and right atrium and right ventricle on the other side of the screen. I'm going to inject now. Here. So this is completely filling the left atrium and not filling the right atrium at all. So the position of the, uh, the, the stent looks satisfactory. Come, to, come back to AP view. The next step, we will take out this balloon. So the balloons have been deflated. So the I am ensuring that the balloons are totally deflated. So now we are going to slowly get So the balloon has entered the sheath now. So the balloon has come out. We will now de-air the sheath. So can I get that uh, marker pigtail again? So we will advance this marker pigtail into the Landerquist wire. and take out this Landerquist wire. So the Landerquist wire comes off. We are going to be making one angiogram of the Okay, we are ready now for about 15 ml at 15 rate one picture of the superior vena cava That's enough ready So that is a superior vena cava that is filling the right atrium through the lumen of the covered stent. Hmm? 
now once again can you make one check pramod of the yes sir echocardiography yeah that's that's a good view of the right pulmonary vein this is the Show right that, pulmonary ah, yeah, now yeah. color the right pulmonary vein yeah, this is the right pulmonary vein there and we can see the the color of still color, okay. inside the right pulmonary vein okay now show the sinus venosus defect now and turning decreasing the rightward torque and now we can see that this is the region of sinus venosus defect that has been completely closed by this cover stent i can pull it a bit upwards to show it even better yeah yeah this was the region where there was sinus venosus this was the region of sinus venosus defect earlier and now that the cover stent has completely sealed the flows and we can't see any flows and whatever red flow is seen is the pulmonary venous flows there and the flows uh yeah this red flows are the pulmonary venous flows there and i'm turning towards leftward side and this is the lumen of the stent and if i color here there's no flow from the left atrium into the right atrium and the flows inside the stents are the flows through the stent from svc thanks a lot that was a beautiful demonstration let me make the last picture so this was a this was a, a good right upper pulmonary venous rerouting into the left atrium freeze it when the right upper pulmonary vein and the left atrium are seen yeah little forward little for yeah that's good that's good we can see the entire region of the fossa ovalis we can see the entire left atrial wall the, the atrial septal part and the right upper pulmonary vein draining into the uh into the left atrium so that was a that was a that was quite good to see so now i'm going to be removing the stiff guide wire out and i'm going to be removing the malin sheath out pramod can you find out yes. the mal the malin sheath that i have uh, yeah. put in yeah. whether it has produced a septal puncture yeah, I'll, i'll just show it now in the oval fossa the, i'm pushing can the probe make, downwards the thermo wire so i'm going to be removing this pigtail now are you able to appreciate the septal yeah, puncture the, hole uh, that we have made yeah this was the region of okay one second color the there some restrictive flows to that region but i should go again figure of h yeah on the right side of the screen we can see the restrictive flows to the from uh, the septal puncture side that we had done okay but the thing is we as we know actually that you can you show it uh, uh, we, we only on the long axis so uh, that sure. we see it far better yeah now without explain yeah, yeah. can you yes no. yeah so that was the yeah. that was the color flow through This the septal puncture that we have made can you measure that hole if we can yeah i sure needle holder color out yeah color out yeah. so as uh, it is quite small we can see quite here. small like it's okay quite small and it was a it was a 8 french mullin yeah, sheet just 2.5 mm yeah uh, so it is it's exactly corresponding to that 8 french sheet so i uh, uh, it is uh, it's likely that we are going to get this uh, septal puncture sealed off uh, over a period of time now i'm going to take a figure of eight stitch so i'm taking about a centimeter below the puncture wound a initial bite below the sheath and then cross over and take another bite above the sheath so this is a size 2 silk which will be removed about 6 uh, to 8 hours later 
I am taking a second byte just to reinforce the previous stitch. The sutures go almost on the same lines. So this is the second layer. That is Anavin. Yep, thank you. So, so this is now the figure of eight has been placed. In order to make that area uh, once again anesthetized, I am infiltrating bupivacaine injection, a local anesthetic, into that place where I have taken the sutures. So, this will give a little longer pain relief. So, this is bupivacaine that is being injected this needle out so I am holding the two sutures I am making a double knot so this is a double knot so this double knot will be tightened now take out the sheet Dr. Farin so So I have tightened it. Okay. Now take a scissor and cut it off. Little bit below. Okay. Okay, so we have now got a femoral, a right femoral venous sheath, a figure of eight stitch, which is going to give some amount of uh, hemostasis. So now, Dr. Pramod, now you can get a final conclusive uh, image yeah. and we will listen to your final verdict about the procedure. Now that all the metals, that is the balloon and the wire is removed, the artifacts are less and now we should be getting a better images. Now I am in the zero degree again in the upper esophageal view and this is the, uh, this, cir this circular thing is the cover stent in the SVC. I am just putting the color here. The color here we can see that the right, the, one, the color on the, the red color on the right side of the screen is the right upper pulmonary vein that is draining into the left atrium which has been rerouted by this procedure. There is no flow across the sinus venosus defect which was actually here when we started the case. Now I push the probe downward and this we can see the metallic markers of the stent very clearly the, circle, Prabhu, the circular ones get the last picture. and there is no flow from right and there is no flow across the Septum and the ASD has complete the sinus venosus defect has completely sealed off. And this the is the lower vein portion vein. of the stent. This is the round structure we can see the lower part of the portion of the stent, which is well beyond the level of uh, the previous septal diff so, uh, SVC type of sinus venosus defect. Now I'm going to the 90 degree again to show the same thing. Now I'm pulling the probe upward. This is the stent in the long axis. This is the lower edge of the stent where we can see the metallic the artifacts here. And then when I color here, this was the region of sinus venosus defect which has completely sealed and I'm rotating more rightward and we can now see the right upper pulmonary vein. This is the right upper pulmonary vein that is draining clearly into the left atrium without any significant turbulence. The pulse wave Doppler again confirms that the flow is laminar. And again, I'll just rotate from left to right to make sure that there is no residual flows. This is on the rightmost rightward side of the stent. I'm turning it. This is in the central part now. We can see no that there is no color crossing from the left to right. And I'm coming completely to the left now. And now after coming completely to the left, we can see that there's no flows across. There is completely, there's complete sealing of the sinus venosus defect with laminar right upper pulmonary flows. So this case is 
Excellent. This was an excellent case, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pramod. That was a wonderful, wonderful demonstration. And now let us relook at that last pulmonary venous angiogram that we have done with the right French mullein sheath in the right upper pulmonary vein. Here we are able to find on angiography that the right upper pulmonary vein is completely rooted into the left atrium. Uh, Mr. Prabhu, can you freeze it when the right upper pulmonary vein is draining into the left atrium? Yeah, that's that's good. So here it is totally rooted into the left atrium, thereby indicating a complete closure of the sinus venous defect. A complete rerouting of the right upper pulmonary vein towards the left atrium, and we have do documented by the uh, spectral Doppler flow of the right upper pulmonary vein that it is not obstructed. The systemic pressure has remained very stable at around 128 by 72 right now, as I speak, and uh, this was this was a very satisfying result. And uh, I thank uh, uh, the Medstream for giving this opportunity, and I also thank my uh, co-operators for this uh, uh, live transmission. We will come again another can week you, with another... Uh, concluding, can yeah. I ask a question? What yes, is the follow-up protocol? What are the antiplatelet okay. uh, that you are planning to give? Yeah, our, our usual protocol has been to give aspirin and Plavix for a period of about uh, one year following this procedure because this is a long covered stent. This is a 24 millimeter diameter with seven, seven centimeter long covered stent. So we try to give aspirin and Plavix for a period of about one year. Uh, we normally do a transesophageal echocardiogram follow-up at around one to three months on the uh, follow-up visit and confirm that there is no residual flow and the right upper pulmonary venous flows are normal. And at the end of one year, if the transesophageal echo is good and the patient is doing well, then we will stop the antiplatelets. This is a young lady of around 28 years. So hopefully by next May, we should be able to stop the antiplatelets totally. So, thanks for this uh, opportunity and we will come again another week with another, yet another interesting transmission.